everybody, let's take a look at the news. First of all, the Dice Tower 15th Annual Gaming Award nominations were announced. We did it last week in the Spring Spectacular, but we also just posted a video a couple days ago where you can just go look at them yourself. They're also on our website. We'll be playing and, um, you know, working on the voting for the final of these. That will be announced in the Spring Spectacular, which is the third week of July. So... That's congratulations to all the nominees, and you can see them on the website. So there's a, a really good spread. Like we said in the video, it doesn't really matter at this point, in, in my opinion, who wins. You can play any of each of the slate of nominees and have a great time. Absolutely. All right. Asmodee has launched a, the new, the Unbox Now board game label, um, which is essentially their version of calling games welcoming games or gateway games. That's kind of what this is. It's like, hey, we went out and spent a lot of money to buy all the most popular games in the world, and now we're putting them all in one line. I'm not kidding. That's what they're doing. That's what they did and are well, doing. Well, yeah, that's a very cynical way of putting it. But um, That's not cynical. I mean, that's... They bought these games, and they're putting them in a line. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm, that's what they did. They, they they went out, and they bought these great games, and they're telling new gamers that these are games that have sold a million copies each and have won 140 awards at least. That's part of what they're doing here. And uh, you, these are the ones you could key on as a new gamer, and I think that they're pretty darn good ones that they've obviously put in this line. Oh, I don't know. I don't disagree. I think that's good. I mean, right. I was looking at this picture here and I was like, where's Ticket to Ride? But Ticket to Ride is also on this list. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. As is Seven Wonders and um, a couple other games. Seven, Seven Wonders Duel. I just don't know. Yeah. How I mean, useful this is... is this brand? I, I don't mean that. I mean, like, who's going to look at this brand and go, oh, I should buy these? Most of the games that are on this level are bought because of word of mouth anyway. True. I think Maybe this is a really good way a retailer can do this. They can take these games and say the unbox it now line. And if somebody comes in, so like, I don't know, my, 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 you know, I want to get a game for my, my grandson and boom. And they say like, these are the biggest games in the industry. And these are the ones that people are focused on. So all of these are good. I, I think it's a great idea for them. Is it going to have an impact? Well, these, again, these games sell like a million copies a year. Well, not quite, but. It's going to be, it's an interesting way I think someday I'm going to do a top them. 10 popular games not owned by Asmodee. But That's it's actually a me, good list. It's going to take me years to figure that out because uh, <laughs> it's so hard. I'm going to do a top 10 Unbox Now games. It's going to take me <laughs> Which one will you leave out? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jumping to Asmodee's competitor, Hasbro. Hasbro has bought or they're about to, or they're in the process of purchasing D&D Beyond, which is a digital role-playing game owned by, um, is it Curse Fandom. LLC? No. Fandom. Fandom. They're buying it from Fandom, right. So, so this is, they bought it for $146.3 I always wonder how they come to these points when the, when the amounts are this large, but who yeah. knows? Uh, yeah, so I, I play D&D 5th Edition, um, on, online and D and D beyond, <clears throat> excuse me, is their way of keeping track of your character, uh, creating the character, keeping track of the character. And the DM has, you know, a separate part of D and D beyond that they use for the whole game system to run it, uh, when you're online, mostly, um, it's fantastic. I mean, without it, you know, you have to own a million books and, and it would be so much harder to not to have this system. So I am, I, I'm in love with D&D &D Beyond and I actually thought Hasbro actually owned it because it's all of D&D &D there, all the logos, all the stuff. It, obviously it was licensed from Hasbro. So now Hasbro's picking it up. I'm sure they'll even make it better, uh, an amazing product, even better. So cool. I find it interesting why you say that, since I've seen Hasbro make many games worse. Um, why would well, you say that you are assuming they're making it better? Have you bought a Hasbro game recently? Because <laughs> I have, and they fair, suck. I just want to be really clear fair, on that. Fair enough on that comment. But but which part of Hasbro 
are we talking about here? We're talking about the good part of Hasbro, which is Watsy, right? Wizards of the Coast and their digital stuff is really good. I think that's the, the hobby uh, stuff. They might be when you say the good part, you're not talking about the uh, their. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you mean the, the better quality stuff? I wouldn't necessarily call Watsy good. No, I mean they're the the, the they quality feed stuff. Off the stuff the addictions out. of human beings with a collectible card game. What? They're. <laughs> Maybe, but their D and D and their Magic the Gathering are hobby games, and this this falls. So it's Hasbro as the umbrella company buying D and D Beyond, but really this is going to fall into Watsy's side because they own D and D. So I think this is a good thing. Watsy will now develop it. And by the way, we did report on the the the, cha- the, the, the president of Hasbro now is the guy who was running the D and D uh, the Watsy division. So who knows? Maybe we'll see some better stuff out of Hasbro. You're right, though. Most of the stuff that they do under their brand is Drek. I was in Target yesterday, and I can agree. All right. Um, Let's jump to the other Borg. Asmodee, again, uh, (laughs) is releasing Patient Zero. Uh, This is a new deduction game from Helvetic, which has a very – the cover and then the picture of the game. They feel slightly mismatched to me, actually. Um, I have no idea what I'm looking at here. uh... What is happening? There, those people are about to have a giant virus land on their head. Okay, right. So it's not a good cover. Let's let, we can agree on this. I don't know what the heck's going on in that cover. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that cover doesn't look like the the game. Then the game looked like this medical clinic type thing. Oh no, I caught it. Did, oh did the, no, you did, got me, asthma bear. Did the virus come from outer space? Check your wallet. I mean, why is are they empty? looking up? Where's my money? <laughs> anyway, this yeah, game actually sounds interesting. Yeah. It does sound interesting because you're making a a three molecule antidote, save the world, a deduction game. I like that sort of thing. That's that's intriguing to me. I hope the game is good. So I'm I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the game. Um, yes, I am too. All right, now let's jump to finally a different company, Haba. They're also a big company. Um, They're releasing the King of the Dice, the board game. So the King of the Dice was a small game. Have you played this one, Z, the King of the Dice? No, I just think it's funny. The naming conventions of these things are just funny. You know, there's often like something, something, the dice game. So now the King of the Dice, I'm guessing, was a dice game. They're making the board game. <laughs> it's gone the other uh, way. Yeah. I'm yeah, looking yeah, it up online a... here. The King of the Dice is a card slash dice game, which actually looks pretty interesting. Um, I'll have to hunt that one down. Oh. It's Haba, though, so I'm on board, period. So this, so it's a kid's game, obviously, right? Because they only do kids, you know, That whatever. is not correct, actually. Uh, they make many games nowadays that aren't kids' games. No, I didn't know um, that, actually. Now, if it's not the bright yellow box, oftentimes it's not a kid's game. It's in that family line. Like, for example, so, go ahead. They, did a, they did a series alliance, but Karuba won the Spiel des Jahres. And that's not so, a kid's okay, game. So Spiel des Jahres weight games. And this certainly doesn't look like a kid's game, right? So, yes. Um, oh, I sure. Not they know don't do they heavy really... games, but they definitely do family right. weight games. Yeah. Well, they, they do quality stuff, so. I'm happy that they're doing this. All right. Now let's jump to Looney Labs. So they're releasing Flux and Lunacy, which are their two most popular games, with Olympus. They got the license from Zeus himself um, to, to put these together. <laughs> I don't know why that got me. That's pretty good. <laughs> this is okay. This is interesting. It's just funny that they're like, they're, they're doing all these IPs, and suddenly they're like, also, Greek gods. I'm like, okay, cool. They've had enough uh, paying for IPs, so they went to the public domain. But Zeus said, you have to pay me anyway. Well, I think, though, it says you here in the like, thing. This looks like to me that they found an artist who's, artwork they liked who drew these things already and they were like "Ooh, we want to use this artwork well actually that does look to be the case the artist here is echo chernick echo um, the dolphin um 
You know what? Come to think of it, though, I wouldn't recommend Googling that artist at work. So let's move on. All really? right, more Here we go. Let me save this for later. Hold on. <laughs> no. Bodegas and PDC. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How do you spell that? Ooh, heck up. Up. Flux Remix is coming out. This is in. This was released. Okay, this came out in March. I must have missed this. This uh, keeps all the keepers from the current edition, but changes the goals. So there's now different combos. Basically, it's Flux 2.0. Extra um, Chaos Edition. Oh, that we is needed funny. more chaos in Flux. This is a great idea. <laughs> this is a great I idea. Flux had was more chaos. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. This is, uh, this is an Insta not buy for me. Come on. Oh. Well, let's go to something else that might be an instant buy for you from Renegade Games. They released a game called Not Wingspan, Bird Watcher. <laughs> so this is a game about birds. And let's let's pick up on all that sales that Wingspan is doing, which Jamie Segmeyer, by the way, just released his numbers. And it's almost at 1.5 million copies sold. So, again, I don't blame I don't blame anyone else for making a, a bird game. Why not? Um, you got to make a, a bird game, game. now. It's, it's coming out December. You are a wildlife photographer taking pictures of birds. That's actually not a very new theme. There's a lot of games out these days. It's like, take pictures of animals. Yeah. It so looks, obviously, it's a very different game okay. than, than, yeah. Sure. I don't know that I'm loving the, the cover. It seems a little odd. The cover's fine, but, like, the birds are a little off-centered. I would... I don't know. The the birds look great like on the, the cards. I like that composition. I think it's a good looking composition. I like the old timey font. It's a good looking. I think they, yeah. I think they needed to separate it from the composition of Wingspan's cover. Therefore, they did you know the two birds. I don't know feeding each other, looking at each other. I don't know. It's very very pretty though. All these birds are like uh, Audubon Society. You know, pictures of birds. They're really beautiful. Hmm. All right, let's take a look at a trio of games from Catch Up Games, a French publisher. So first we have um, Les Guardians de Haversac. I'm not sure what. I'm, I'm convinced I mispronounced Le. that. A competitive game in which you're the building. Gardens, the Gardeners or the, what is it? It's yeah, Guardians. The Gardeners. It's Guardians or the for Guardians sure. of some place. Yeah, it's got to be Guardians, Guardians of the Hav, of the Harbor. The Guardians of Lahav. That's what we're going to call this one. The Guardians of Lahav. Either way, it looks interesting. It looks like there's a bag building mechanism in this, and you're placing stuff on a board. I don't know. This one looks interesting. Um, I want to give this one a whirl. But the one that Z is interested in is our next one. Oracalum. I'm. I don't know why I'm trying to pronounce these. It's either. One I think the, it's either Orichalcum or Oracalcum. There's a C, yeah, C, yeah, L, C there, or a chalcum, or a calcum. Yeah, because I'm, We're I, back I, to like Greek I said, gods. I, this is from <laughs> uh, Looney Labs as well, and uh, it is a Bruno Catala game, which is why Tom assumes that I would like it. Don't get me wrong, he, he is assuming correctly. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is coming out at the Essence Spiel later this year, and uh, if you're listening to this on our audio show later on, it is not coming from Newly Labs, it's coming from Ketchup. Um, right. So, this is the design team, because Bruno Cattell is only one of the designers, Johannes Guppy is the other, and they did Queens to be or not to be, I don't believe I played that game. Have you, Z? I have indeed, I have, yeah, it's... Um... It's a simple little uh, flower collection and making patterns of flowers and scoring. It's a, it's a very light game, very straightforward and simple, very abstract, Azul-esque kind of game. This looks a little more thematic for sure. It kind of looks like Ishtar a little bit, which is also a Bruno Catala game. So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always excited to try out games from... Uh, Bruno Catala and the people he chooses to work with, uh, those tend to be good matchups. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to check this one out. And the final game from Catch Up, they announced a definitive edition of Paper Tales that includes the base game and two expansions. 
Um, one, the, the expansion that's already out, another expansion, which will also be sold separately. So in case you already own everything, I don't know if this definitive expansion will be in a bigger box or anything. I guess we'll find out once they tell us more. This used to be in the show like catalog. A lot. Yeah, Paper Tail's good. Yeah. I'm looking to pick up the second expansion. Same here. Big, big, big fan of this. All right, since Asmodee, like I said, they like to buy all the uh, gateway games that are out there. So they are now the exclusive distributor, I think, of Canvas. Um, this is from Road to Infamy Games. This is very popular. Did really well on Kickstarter. And um, they are going to be distributing it in the U.S. And quarter two, 2022. All right. Okay. All right. Alexander Pfister designs, uh, is redesigning, as far as I can tell, this is a redesign of Mombasa. Um, oh. So it's it's not the same game. It's It just says it has Mombasa's DNA. So it's probably Mombasa 2.0. But the theme has been changed. Yeah. The original theme of Mombasa, a lot of people didn't like that um, as a colonization of Africa. This has been changed out of Sky Mines. And you are... Taking companies and you're trying to get Crip coin. So um, I'm sure that is a, as, as it is an Alexander Fister game, there is, uh, it, I believe the formula he uses is 12% theme. So um, mm -hmm. <laughs> that might be, I might be exaggerating on the high end there. Yeah, a little but, high. Uh, end, right? This is from Pegasus Spiel. Uh, looking forward to this one. I, I like a lot of Alexander Fister's games. Yeah. He's he's excellent designer, so this should be uh, interesting the way he's changed it up. All right, and news that launched many, many emails to my uh, account. Cosmic Encounter has a new expansion out called Cosmic Odyssey, and people have asked me what I think about this, so let's talk about it a little bit. This is a new expansion. It's a big expansion. They say it's the biggest one that they've released. Wow. It has several aliens which I'm always excited about. More aliens is good. Interestingly enough, they made up this like alternate timeline or something they're saying where there are other aliens, new versions of older aliens that are either slightly stronger or slightly weaker, or in other words, more balanced. <laughs> they won't say that, but that's definitely what it is. Um, there's a few aliens that people think that are not very interesting, and it feels like they basically said, we'll fix them. But they're actually from another timeline, so you can still use the original aliens. The biggest part of this expansion is a campaign game. And I got to be frank, I have zero interest in this. Because, <laughs> no, here's the thing. I love Cosmic no, I Encounter. Get you. Yeah. I play Cosmic Encounter at conventions all the time. I get together five people. We play a six-player game of it. It's fun. But when it's over, I don't go... All right, let's meet again tomorrow to go to the next phase. It doesn't feel like the kind of game that I want to campaign for. Cosmic is like an experience of a game. Not every game needs to yes. be campaign. I don't get it. I, I mean, I'm so not guessing every game. Every so game guess needs you. a campaign, Tom. So the last time before this week that I played Cosmic Encounter, I'm pretty sure it was with you, Tom, in in studio, or I I, I think we played it on the air, and it was like. Seven years ago, eight years ago. I don't know if you even remember that. And I'm pretty sure, like, you and I won, or four of us won. It was one of those games where, like, most most of the people won and one person lost. I remember it distinctly. It was so much fun. It's a great game. I played it two days ago here at the Gathering of Friends. Zev and I won. <laughs> it was, and it was it's great, just a great right? game. But it's did just you a then great want to game. go to another stage of the campaign? Oh, absolutely. I want to play. No. This is this is like the anti-campaign game. I don't I yeah I don't get why you'd want to add this. I mean, unless you like uh, you're you're a player that literally plays this game constantly, and you're like, hey, why don't we just try this now as a campaign? This is the kind of game like you said you you play it at a convention, right? Or you pick it up off your shelf once a year, or maybe, you know, maybe even a few times, but not a game that I want to play over an expanded campaign. I don't I, I don't get that idea. Yeah, I mean, I'll Here's give my it a problem. whirl. I'll look at I'm it. My problem with this is twofold. One, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Like they 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 expand a lot of the decks that come in previous expansions in this expansion, which yeah. I really like. 
That's something I definitely want to have. Oh, more of this kind of card. More encounter into cards, the deck. Yeah. yeah, yeah, more of this kind of card that came in, in, in this expansion, this module, right? right? I like that, but I have to get the entire thing if I want just those parts. And the second thing is, this ain't cheap. This is $60 yeah. MSRP. That's a big I expansion. Yeah, I don't want the legacy stuff or the what a campaign stuff. I just want all those pieces. So, unfortunately, those things are coupled here. You can buy Cosmic Encounter online right now for forty-eight bucks. Well, there's oh. no, there's no doubt that this, you know, Cosmic Encounter is the MSRP a, is, a great is seventy, game. so it's okay. Is it really? Wow. There's no, there's no doubt this is a great game, uh, and p for people who like a, a good chaotic game, sort of. This is, this is a phenomenal game. Uh, there'll be a lot of people that will get this interesting stuff. Yeah, I guess my thing is not that. Not that it's a campaign as much as just that I think it would be very, very difficult to get a group together for this as opposed to other games like Pandemic Legacy. Yeah, I could play that with these people. We like playing these games. We play through a campaign. Cosmic, I'm like, hey, you guys want to play a game of Cosmic? Yeah. You want to play next week? No, it's just something no. else. I just feel. Yeah. All right. I'm Anyhow. with you. Well, like Let's you said, on. Tom, just not not everything needs a campaign. Yep. I'm playing chess the campaign next week. All right. It's called a tournament. One of the most maligned games when it comes to how it looks versus to how well it's received is the Castles of Burgundy. Um, so that's being fixed. Coming to Game Found is a super deluxe version of this game with beautiful art, 3D pieces. I mean, this is like looking like it might be a small world deluxe edition. This is pretty impressive. I, I saw but, the I saw the one picture of one of the castles, and it looked unbelievably good. Now I don't own this game, but this is probably going to make me back and get this game because wow, it looks so good. I'm so confused. One thing I never thought I would hear was the castles of Burgundy from Awakened Realms. I know. What? <laughs> What are you talking about? Like, I'm just so it's a little incongruous. By this. What's next? Splendor from Simon? Like, I, I, <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, this is not for everybody, giant obviously. Giant stretch goals with what, the miniatures? <laughs> yes. I don't I, get I'm this giving, at all. I mean, I'm giving up on this. I'm with you, Z. I'm, I like the new artwork a lot, actually, but you're right. Oh, it's great. I, Everything has to be humongous and overproduced at this point. I don't know when that wave will break, like when we stop doing that. But for now, that's the way it is. Yes. And Again, if I, guess I don't if own something and I can favorite. get a product, if I can get a big pr produced copy, if I don't own it, I'm happy with that. I guess, but it's just at some point it is overkill. There, that line does exist. This is Castles of Burgundy here. I played this game. You don't need minis. Does the does the quality of the one that exists suck? Yeah, kinda. It kind of sucks. You're swinging for the fences the other way here, though. This is an overcorrection. <laughs> yes, you are definitely you're oversteering into it. <laughs> All righty, and finally. Um, we knew that uh, Soulmire Games was coming out with an expansion for video. We now know it's called Viticulture World, and it is a cooperative expansion. So this is this is something that's not done very often, where a heavier Euro game has a cooperative mode added to it later on. It was done with Orleans. There's an Orleans one. It's not done very often. Um, yeah. So, and this is cool. different designers. There's uh, d seven different continents that you can play through, changing the game Ooh. each. There will be you know, we'll, we'll, seven we'll learn continents. More, but... well, Did you really say those... seven continents? So we're going to yes, be growing what? wine on Antarctica. Is that what we're going to be doing no, here? The seventh, co the seventh continent is actually Charterstone. The the made-up continent that he has in his other game, Charterstone, it's used that, as a tutorial. Oh, is that true? Yeah, that is true. Oh, I, I didn't read that in here. Oh, that's that's interesting. 
Okay. So, oh, anyway, well, I, 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 as time I, goes by, I'm sure it will sell a billion copies. <laughs> it probably will. You know it. Well, like he uh, re he released his numbers, like I said, a few months ago, and they his were... lowest selling game has sold fifty thousand copies. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, which is really really impressive. His his his, uh, his total sales. I know you didn't we didn't. I don't think you covered it. I wasn't here. Um, his sales now put him in a very rarefied company. Let's put it that way. In, in how big his sales are versus other companies in this industry, like as in number two, possibly two. You're, or allowed, three. you're allowed to say asthma day. We've said it enough. Go ahead. No, you yeah, asthma day obviously purchase? doesn't even. But like he's in the realm with Simon right now in total top line revenue. That's astonishing. Well, yeah, real quickly, he just said it, the revenue is twenty four point seven million last that's year, true. and that's with three employees and three part time employees. That's pretty yeah. good. Um, that that is astonishing. And just to give perspective, uh, for for fiscal year 2020, 2020 because they haven't released twenty twenty one, Simon's revenue is twenty five million and and some change. So that's Amazing, and Simon has way somewhere more than around three fifty. Employees. They have fifty at least. At least they probably have more than fifty employees worldwide. Oh, wait, wrong. His his lowest selling game has sold forty two thousand. That's Euphoria, yeah. actually. But Viticulture has sold two hundred and four thousand. Uh, Scythe has sold half a million, and oh. um, Wingspan one point four. Yeah, and it's even just, like you mean Red Rising, which came out last year, and was not. Too critically praised. They got a decent amount of. It was basically a collective. Eh, it's okay, and it sold 154,000. I'll sell a game that's okay if I sell 154,000 yeah. copies. Yeah. <laughs> Wingspan so. is the the prequel to that Bird Watcher game, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. That's the news. Mm.